Hi, my name is Miranda Berry. I've been Buddhist since I was born. I was born and raised in Burma, which is Southeast Asia. And I have been raised two questions. One is what's the essence of Buddhist teaching? And the other is, is Buddhism pessimistic? The first, the first answer would be, what's the essence of Buddhist teaching? The Buddhist teaching is to find a way for middle path. Is Buddhist teaching is not just for Buddhist people, Buddhists from Asia, it's for anybody in this whole world. It's a philosophy for a lot of people, especially now today we're going through a lot of tough time. By this teaching, we are able to find the middle way, relax, de-stress, and find a lot of happiness. So the second answer for is Buddhism pessimistic. Uh, I would say no. It may sound pessimistic to a lot of evil, uh, a lot of people, because it's their perception. Be just because we relax and then we find concentration through the meditation, so I don't think it's a pessimistic. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lars Underbaki. I've been a practicing Buddhist for about four years now, and. Um, as far as the essence of Buddhism goes, I really feel that the heart of the practice is compassion for, for all sentient life. And just uh, strengthen the mind through samadhi meditation, which means concentration, and really gaining insight into the nature of existence, which is impermanence, through vipassana meditation. Um, I think because of the impermanent nature of reality, many people have come to the mistaken conclusion that Buddhism is pessimistic. And uh, in my experience, once you realize the impermanent nature of, of all phenomena, it really makes each, each life experience all the more beautiful because you realize that that person or that moment will never arise again. So, uh, thank you for your invitation, and my name is, uh, 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 they call me Bhante Rahula, my name is Rahula, so I'm a Buddhist monk, uh, uh, trained, uh, qualified Buddhist monk for over 25 years. So, the, the first question I'm going to answer is, uh, what is the essence of Buddhism? Uh, when you call the essence of Buddhism, actually during the Buddha's time, uh, the the uh, one of the persons as the Buddha's disciple, one of the famous Buddha's disciple disciples, this question, and uh, I will give the same answer to your question. Uh, refraining from unwholesome actions, practicing wholesome actions, and purification of your mind. That is the Buddha's teaching, if I give it in, in minimum number of words. Let me uh, briefly elaborate on this point. Okay. Unwholesome actions means your verbal actions and your physical actions which are unwholesome. Something like telling lies, speaking the things that is not useful. These are unwholesome verbal actions, unwholesome physical actions in destroying life. And uh, alcohol, you take alcohol like that. So that is, this is external behavior. And cultivation of wholesome means the opposite of that. It means that you speak pleasant words, truthful words, do the actions that are beneficial to yourself and beneficial to others. And uh, that is a wholesome action. This is, again, external behavior. But that is not complete. To make it complete, you must develop your mind. That's what you call purification of mind. Once you modify your external behavior, and once you develop your internal behavior to match your well-developed external behavior, then you are a developed person. That is the 
a main purpose in the Buddha's teaching. So that is how I should give Buddha's teaching in minimum number of words. Okay, so uh, the next question I will answer is whether the Buddha's teaching is pessimistic or not. Actually, it's a kind of an accusation that some people say Buddha talked about the suffering in the world. The Buddha used the word suffering. So Buddha said everything is suffering. So that some people argue that Buddha presented a pessimistic picture of about life that nothing is happy in this world. But that is not a realistic presentation of the Buddha's teaching. You know, one mistake arises because people have translated the Pali word Dukkha as suffering. Dukkha is not suffering. So people, those who got this word first, Dukkha, they thought this is suffering. Dukkha does not mean suffering. Dukkha means the insatiable state of mind. In other words, it's greed. So when we have something, we are not happy with that one, we go for something else. So that's insatiable state of mind. That's what you call Dukkha. Dukkha should not be suffer translated as suffering. So that Buddha did not say that everything is suffering. Rather, Buddha said everything, whenever people get it, they like something else. That causes suffering. That's what Buddha said. So that Buddha presented a realistic picture of the world and the universe. Buddha did not lull you in a, in a, in a world that's very beautifully created world. No, Buddha showed the world as a sad place, but Buddha showed the world as it is. So that is a realistic picture rather than a pessimistic picture. Thank you.